Hi everyone, welcome back to my devlog series. In this video, I'm going to be showing you what I've got done this month in my voxel rendering engine. Before I continue, I just want to thank you guys so much for the support you've been giving. We just hit 500 subscribers, which is amazing. And I've loved reading all the comments you guys have left, lots of interesting stuff to see. Also, if you don't know what my current engine is, you can view the devlogs playlist, which will be in the top right hand corner of the screen here. Anyway, back to the video. So I've been away from university for the past month. I've been at my parents' house and it's nice to be in the countryside for a while. I've enjoyed going for walks and just thinking about how to solve problems with the engine. I've also had a lot of university coursework over the holiday, so the engine has been a bit slower than I would have liked. However, one of the things I've been working on is something that I'm actually interested to implement into the engine, which is a fluid simulation on a cellular grid. This would be something similar to Powder Toy because I really like the idea of each cell having its own materials and then interacting with other cells around it, like fire spreading and water putting out the fire. That's so cool. Anyway, now let's actually get to what I did in the engine this month. My main task has been to fix the caching system for the graphics card. And this has been actually requiring a full rewrite of my cache for the voxels on the graphics cards and some on the CPU actually. Uh, this has taken quite a lot of time this month. I've removed a few of the systems I used to have. So my voxels used to be stored in pages. In memory, that means that I could unload multiple voxels quickly at the same time. However, I've actually found out that storing the voxels in pages has made the algorithms much more complex than they needed to be. So I've gone back to just storing voxels straight in a big long array. So every voxel is just an index in the array. This is what I've spent most of my time doing this month. And I've experimented with multiple different caching systems and most of them have just not worked as I've wanted. Each system is taking about a week or so to properly implement and with all of that, figuring out that it's not the right way to do it after a week's work can be quite disheartening. However, I think I might have actually come up with a way to do it. And at the moment, I'm about halfway through implementing this new system that seems to be working a lot better than all of the other systems that I've implemented. My first attempt at the caching system was going to be to sort the pages of voxels as the engine runs. So this meant that we could have the least used pages at the bottom of the list and the most used at the top. So that means if we want to load new voxels, we can just take off the least used pages from the list and replace them with voxels we want to load. In theory, that should work with no problems. However, actually getting this to work proved to be quite a challenge. I've been debugging errors in this system for weeks now. Anyway, what I found out was the data was not being unloaded correctly, and that causes all sorts of errors to be thrown in the tree and visual glitches. In one of my debugging attempts, I decided to create a graph to show how often the pages are accessed to see if the cache was running out of space. Because if the cache runs out of space, then there's no more places to put voxels in, and then you're gonna have problems. And if you look here, the bar on the graph on the left are pages that haven't been accessed this frame, and the ones on the right are ones that have been accessed quite a lot. So as you can see, there's a lot of free pages that we could access because we've got a big bar on the left. However, I mean, for some reason, the system still failed to choose the right page to unload. It would just choose pages that have been actually accessed this frame and not ones that haven't been accessed. This kind of showed that the sort system of sorting pages was not the right way to go especially with the performance impact that came from trying to run a sort algorithm and I was even trying to run this on the graphics card but it was just sorting like 10-20 million elements a frame that's just not feasible. 
I have now come up with a better solution, I think, and that's what I'm currently working on to implement. I'm about halfway through implementing this, and this solution gets rid of the whole sorting altogether, which should also increase the performance. Anyway, my goal for this month is to have this all implemented. However, this is just the first step in the caching system. The CPU needs to have its own cache implemented, allowing it to unload to the disk and in the future over the internet hopefully, so that you can have multiple players playing the game. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, so subscribe if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys next video.